This also is part of their daily routine, to arrive too late, to find people yeah, hello, that did uh, not make it. I'm returning your calls to discuss um, the way forward with these dead bodies that we found. The captain of Sea Watch asked the Maritime Coordination Center in Rome if there are other vessels in the area. Yes, well, uh, we um, investigated all the possibilities here, and there is no possibility for us to uh, intervene. No other ship is able or willing to recover the corpses. Sea Watch lacks cooling facilities to take dead bodies on board. The only thing the team can do is to document what they find. They put a life jacket on the body, note the date and coordinates on it, and leave the dead person floating in the mass grave of the Mediterranean Sea. The numbers of those who drowned have risen again in recent months. One possible cause, many NGOs have retreated. The air out here has become rough. Head of mission Julian Köbera talks about the unpredictability of the Libyan Coast Guard, but also about political pressure and about the accusation that the NGOs are part of the reasons why more refugees come. Wenn die NGOs weg wären, sicherlich würde nicht mehr so viel darüber berichtet werden und vielleicht würde es auch vergessen werden, aber die Leute würden immer noch da draußen ertrinken. Und zwar in Mengen, in Mengen, in Mengen, in Mengen. Weil die Fluchtgründe sind immer noch da. Und wenn ihnen irgendjemand auf der anderen Seite in Libyen verspricht, dass die Lichter der Ölplattform, die in 30 Meilen Entfernung sind, Europa sind, dann sind die Leute auch gewillt, für drei, vier Stunden auf ein, auf ein Schlauchboot zu steigen um dann irgendwann festzustellen, dass sie mitten im Ozean sind, die Orientierung verloren haben und dass der Sturm aufkommt. A storm actually arrives the next morning. On the radar, the crew spots a relatively large refugee boat. Although it is made out of wood, it is heavily overcrowded and prone to capsize any moment. They will reach Europe thanks to the civilian rescuers. Sea Watch takes 303 persons on board this morning, almost all of them from Eritrea. Many of the refugees are in a bad condition and malnourished. Haidi Sadiq, the cultural mediator on board of Sea Watch, hears stories of violence, rape, and torture daily. Some people are more traumatized than others, and some people are more uh, clearly abused than others. But I think it's quite clear that anyone who comes through Libya has been through hell. Many of these people tell us about their time in prison or forced labor. Refugees in Libya are seen as a commodity rather than humans. Amnesty International just released another report denouncing severe human rights violations. These Eritreans escaped that horror only a few hours ago. No, when we reach in a house, we are in a cage. Okay. We want to go outside. No sound, no words. They beat you. Yeah. If you maybe if you fight each other, it's very difficult. They cut you by any means. If there is a gun with them, they put the gun on your head. The same words can be heard again and again. I would rather have died at sea than stayed in Libya. A lot has changed out here since last summer, says Julian Köbera, since the Libyan Coast Guard is being financed, trained and equipped by Italy and the EU, with the objective to help with the search and rescue of migrants. Man merkt schon, dass die libysche Küstenwache wesentlich aktiver ist, natürlich, also überhaupt aktiv ist. Vorher waren sie nicht darin involviert, irgendwie Leute zu retten oder geschweige denn nach Libyen zurückzubringen. Und sie sind schon jeden Tag präsent, insbesondere bei den besseren Wetterlagen. Und sie übernehmen auch einige der Rettungen, also sie übernehmen die, die Koordinierung, also sie fordern sie ein. Stay there, you are safe, stay there, okay? Hold yourself. This incident last November shows how brutal that can be. When Sea Watch arrives at the scene, many people are already in the water. The Libyan Coast Guard with the Grey Ship has approached the refugee boat too fast. Panic erupts and people fall into the water. The Libyan Coast Guards, a majority of them trained by the EU, 
beat the rescue people and suddenly leave, disregarding a person still hanging on the ladder outside the boat. An Italian Navy helicopter appeals on the radio. Five corpses are recovered on that day. According to the Italian authorities, many more are believed to have drowned. In London, the assistant professor Violetta Moreno Lux studies the drama in the Mediterranean closely. For 10 years, she has been researching and lecturing about refugee rights and working together with NGOs to that end. She heavily criticizes the cooperation with Libya. Considering that the Libyan Coast Guard is a construction, it doesn't really exist because there is no Libyan state to which they are accountable. That on the one hand. On the other hand, we know that when people come back to Libya, they risk being tortured and enslaved. And that is common knowledge that everyone is aware of. Because of these two factors, in this particular circumstances, cooperation with the Libyan Coast Guard is against human rights law. Back on board the Sea Watch, where a confusing search is being conducted. The ship has received a notification from the coordination center in Rome. A refugee boat in the area is in distress. A few miles further down, the crew detects an Italian Coast Guard ship. They contact it via radio. At first, the Italians remain silent. When they finally respond, they do so hesitantly. Because of this, the crew does not proceed to the location and continues its search in another direction. But shortly after, they notice on the radar that a Libyan Coast Guard is heading towards the Italians, lingering there for a while. An hour later, Sea Watch learns that the refugee boat has now been found, exactly in the area where the Italians have been all the time. Sea Watch checks again. With the help of a special camera, the Libyans can be seen leaving the scene. Vaguely visible on their deck are dozens of heads, most likely refugees. The Libyans are taking them back to Libya out of international waters. Quite possibly, they were assisted during the operation by the Italians. Yeah, the whole thing was just, it's, it, it, even now it's a bit unclear in my mind what just occurred, but it seems as though um, the Coast Guard vessel, the Italian vessel, just completely lied to us in order that they could um, um, get those people back to Libya via the Libyan Coast Guard. In dem Fall kann man entweder sagen, haben sie uns Informationen vorgehalten oder sie haben uns halt bewusst getäuscht, um äh, in Ruhe arbeiten zu können. Genau wissen tun wir es nicht, aber es fühlt sich so an, als wäre jedenfalls unsere Präsenz nicht erwünscht gewesen. It is not the first time civilian rescuers encounter this deliberate confusion. Last autumn, the news channel Vice documented a possibly similar operation. At that time, a journalist on board a Libyan Coast Guard vessel. In their feature, the Libyan captain tells her that he has just been called by the Italians. We received two distress calls from the Italian warship. We received the position and they confirmed Keep away, a banner on the Italian ship warns the migrants. Instead of rescuing the refugees themselves, they call the Libyans, who then take them on board. This behavior of the Italians may be in violation of international law. They are indirectly responsible because they are informing the Libyans in the knowledge that people are going to end up in a situation of ill-treatment and that makes them complicit of their final fate. So either directly or indirectly, I think personally there is Italian responsibility to be determined in these particular circumstances. Together with other legal experts, Violetta Moreno Lux prepares a case to take Italy to the European Court of Human Rights. 
Italy denies the accusations. The Minister of the Interior wrote in a letter to the Commissioner for Human Rights of the European Council in autumn 2017, Italy has never rejected migrants on the high seas. During an official handover of command ceremony of the Italian Navy, the Minister of Transport states only truisms. È fondamentale che i migranti che vengono accolti nei centri di accoglienza abbiano un pieno rispetto dei loro diritti, assolutamente. Quindi per questo noi stiamo lavorando perché stiamo facendo andare l'UNHCR e l'Organizzazione Internazionale dei Migranti a controllare i centri di raccolta. Quindi eh, questo è un successo dell'azione italiana in Libia. Quindi stiamo anche addestrando la Guardia Costiera Libica perché agisca con massima professionalità. È chiaro che è un lavoro che deve continuare, ma credo che, ripeto, abbiamo impostato le cose in maniera corretta. Libia è anche un importante topic during the annual conference of Frontex, the European Border Agency. The director emphasizes once again that Libya is not a safe place for refugees. I would never uh, sign an operational plan, well, never, at this point of time, I, I, I would not uh, sign an operational plan saying that uh, rescued migrants should be disembarked to Libya. But for Italy and the EU, the focus is clear, to stem migration. To that end, even a collaboration with questionable partners seems legitimate. Only in January, according to the UNHCR, the Libyan Coast Guard picked up and returned more than 1,400 migrants. Meanwhile, on Sea Watch, one deck has been converted to a makeshift church. These Eritreans praise God for having escaped Libya. They say their group had been locked up in a warehouse for many months. Soon they will arrive in Sicily. What expects them there is uncertain. Julian Köberer is aware of the fact that the NGOs are a part of this confused situation too. But he doesn't think that the problem can be solved out here at sea. Man muss andere Lösungen finden politisch. Niemand soll auf Boote steigen. Ich will auch nicht auf diese Boote, dass Leute auf diese Boote steigen und ich bin auch nicht zum Spaß hier. Ich brauche hier nicht sein so aber solange es Leute tun, fühlen wir uns Als Europäer, die mitverantwortlich sind für diese Situation, dazu verpflichtet, da zu sein und das zu tun, was wir können. Part of this is also to destroy boats, so that these will not again endanger the lives of hundreds of people.